Are you an artist and do you sell your paintings online? I do. And I've got some good news because I sold some paintings this last December online and I also got a couple commissions, so that's really exciting. In this video, I'm going to share with you a couple places that I sell my art and show you the piece of art that sold on Saatchi Art Online. I also show my art on other sites like Art Finder and Singular Art and many different places and of course my website. So uh, I'm going to share with you a painting that I created that was inspired by Wolf Kahn, a pastel, and we're going to talk about pastels and many more things. So stay with me. I've got a lot to share with you. Okay, let's talk about Saatchi Art. It is worth pointing out that Saatchi Art has a commission of 40%, whereas if you show your work in a gallery, possibly the standard commission is sometimes 50% and 60% during show. So this means that even without a discount, you'll be earning more through your sales with Saatchi Art than if you were to sell through a brick and mortar gallery that takes 50% commission. You can see by all the red circles that I have sold on Saatchi, but you have to keep posting to keep being seen. But I think it's better to sell directly out of your own site where you can price the paintings at whatever you want. Now, having your own website and selling from your own website is great because you can set it up any way you want. I happen to use Shopify, the light version. I also put pop-ups to be able to capture people's emails. And I place my art on the Shopify site, which is linked to my site. I even can sell t-shirts and things like that. So if you want a t-shirt, go buy one off my website. So there's a lot of ways to sell art. I have to be honest with you. It takes a lot of effort and work to post your art up on the different sites. You've got to shoot your art. You've got to photograph it. You've got to name it. You've got to price it. And then you have to load it. It takes a tremendous amount of time to do that. I average about an hour per painting on loading art. I've done many pastels and I've loaded them onto different sites. I really love creating pastels and I've created some beautiful pastel barns that seem to be great selling. I do many types of styles of art and I just paint in any style that I choose because, you know, I have to admit it, I'm getting old, her, <laughs> and I might as well paint what I want whenever I want. Well, this is the painting that I sold over the holidays. I'm so thankful for the patrons that buy my art, and I really enjoyed painting this painting in pastel and I'll tell you more about that. I guess paint and pastel is something you do. I guess you really draw. After you sell, then you have to ship it. For an extra bonus, I sent this patron a extra gift and I created an extra piece of art. I know that sounds pretty big, but wouldn't you love to get an extra piece of art when you opened up your order? So it was Christmas and I created my certificate of authenticity and I carefully uh, decided how I wanted to wrap the painting. I wrapped it in bubble wrap and then I placed it in a cardboard carrier and I securely taped it. So there is a lot of things that you have to do in order to sell, not just paint. Selling is the important part. So you have to take the effort to pack and load to the different sites. Not to mention the time that it takes to manage your own site. That's really important. But let's go ahead and talk about pastels. I told you that I love creating barns. This pastel was also inspired by Wolf Kahn, who also created many barns. My barns are different than his, but I really love creating them. But then you have to shoot them, photograph them, and you have to do them in situ, and you have to price them, and oh, it goes on and on. But hey, it's worth it, and boy, do I enjoy when I get the email that says, sold. So I've posted a new piece of art just recently, and that's the piece of art that I want to tell you about. Now you may say, that piece of art looks very similar to the one you sold. And yes, it does. 
you can never create two things exactly the same. But someone walked in when I was packing up the painting to sell, and they said, I can't believe you sold that one, Sheila, and that one has gotten a lot of attention. You should do more like it. And so it gave me the idea to create another piece of art very similar to it for the Christmas season. This is a pastel close-ups that I created uh, called Maroon Barn. I promised myself that I would create art on Christmas. The wonderful thing about creating art is you're escaping into your own fantasy world of pleasure and enjoyment. And I finished this pastel on Christmas Day. And so that was very exciting. And then I went off to celebrate. You know, sometimes we're escaping into fantasy. And we have to remember that it's the holidays and time for cocktails and time to enjoy. And so make sure that you take care of yourself and enjoy those wonderful pleasures during the holidays of having those special Christmas treats. These two cocktails were cranberry and this one was coconut margarita. Boy, I have a friend that makes them and boy, are they delicious. And don't forget to eat all those glorious foods and decorate, decorate your cocktails as well as your art. I love wonderful festive food and I love creating beautiful dinners and experimenting with different types of food and also the cocktails <laughs> and making wonderful treats for my friends and family. I hope you've enjoyed the holidays and of course I want to wish you a happy holiday and hope that you find the time to enjoy those magic moments with your friends and with your family and then of course remember to take the time to create art. And let's talk about creating my maroon barn now. I prefer to use soft pastels. You know, soft pastels are made from pigment and a binder that keeps it from falling apart into dust. Most pastels are rolled into a stick form, usually round, but sometimes they're square. They only contain pigment and a tiny bit of binder. The harder soft pastels, I guess the cheaper ones, are often contain more binder. But pastels can be blended with fingers, a paper stump, a color shaper, and various liquids can even be added to pastels. So I encourage you to try them. They're so forgiving and the color is wonderful. I love to use sanded pastel paper and I'll block off areas with simple tape just to create an area or I'll just do free form. The tape is very forgiving and you can remove it easily um, but be careful it does stick to watercolor paper and it might tear. So check out whatever brand of pastels you like and experiment. There are many different kinds and many different prices. So explore pastels they're so fun to use and they're so easy to use because you just need this small piece of pastel then you seal the pastel with fixative when you finish to hold it in place because they're kind of like chalk this is the painting that i created for the lady as her gift the second uh, painting that i sent to her i thought it was fun to just create something that she would be surprised with and would really appreciate the extra effort that I did in sending her the art and adding an additional gift. Remember pastels are so easy to use. You just kind of scribble across the, the surface and you can use your hands to rub or to blend or you can rub with a cloth or a little piece of cardboard. You can put layer after layer on them and just build up the colors until you're happy with the end result. So I used tape to block off the barn and then I just freely added color and used them like little drawing sticks. Pastel. Please give them a try. Look at the way this color goes on. 
I guess the only thing that I don't really like about them is the way they feel on your fingers. They're just kind of dry and they do discolor a little bit. But the results is glorious and the color is so intense. So I urge you to explore pastels and explore the wonderful things you can make from barns to flowers to anything that you can imagine. I hope this inspires you artists out there to create, pick up your paint, your pastels, or anything else you might have. You know, it's really difficult to make your energies come alive on any day, let alone Christmas Day, because you're anxious to get out and celebrate with family and friends. But as I said in an earlier post, I promised myself that I was going to create and work on some art this Christmas and try to work every single day. And so that's my goal. So I will be posting little snippets of the work that I'm working on. This is a pastel. Let me share it with you. It's inspired by Wolf Kahn, a wonderful artist, a pastel artist. I'm fortunate enough to live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and one of the representatives for Wolf Kahn Originals is Gerald Melbourne Gallery. So if you're not familiar with that site, go out and check it out. Uh, Gerald and all the artist people in the gallery, Merry Christmas to you as well. So make sure that you try to get your energies going this Christmas and this new year and create every single day. I challenge you. Please share it with me. So in these final shots, I'm just going to show you some close-ups of the painting. Notice how I pull the tape back and it just leaves a nice clean edge and it makes it really nice when you ship it off to the client that it has kind of like a built-in frame to it. Um, and don't forget to use fix it, it And notice how wonderful the colors are and how they build up and there's such contrasting values. And since this is the end of the year, 2023, I hope that you take the time to create art and that you explore all the different mediums out there from oil to pastels and that you continue to explore creating and try to create every single day. This is Cheryl Johnson and I encourage you to pursue your passions and have more joy every single day. I wish you a happy holiday and will enjoy sharing with you in 2024. Let's make it an exceptional year where we all commit to excellence and creativity. Take care. <music>